I went to Carbon School as a lad, and I reached the age of 14, which I left school. And us lads, we always used to go to Braden to have a bit of skylarking, like we used to. But I got so fond of Braden that I used to go on and hunt about for the eels in the big pools, what used to be left by the tides, on the rons, which uh, we very often used to get. As I got older, I come to know of the man doing a bit of smelting the top part of Braden, and his name is Burgess. He lived at Borough Castle, and he said to me, would you like to come smelting with me? Well, my mother said to me, I don't know, Bill, she said, that may be something in it. So anyhow, I carried on and done it. And I worked there nearly all the winter, after smelts and eels. But we didn't get many eels, but we got one or two because the weather was on the coldest side. But the question on it was, there was a good shield to be had at the smelt catching. I never used to do the rowing, he used to do all the rowing, and I used to lead the line along the bank. We used to turn in from Borough Castle Flat, round out the stakes and back to the channel way where we could get the net out nice without losing the fish. They used to take them to Borough Castle where we used to pack them up and send them off to London. Then in the winter, in the summer months, Mr. Burgess used to have the yacht for John Collins, for John Collins of Horn, uh, Roxham, which he used to be the skipper of, and the name of it was called the Blue Diamond. Well then, in the summer time, I used to work my traps round the stakes on Braden and in the main channel ways, which I used to get a good living at, and I used to supply, I used to supply Copeland's of Billingsgate of London with the eels. And I did for years upon years. There was one, I'd already baked the traps up and put them down on, on the stakes of Braden, which I used to work regular. Eel traps. Eel traps. And going num to number 13 stake, I had a trap on there, I baited it up and I was then a leaving that began to rain and carry on. And anyhow, I thought, right, I'll move a little bit fast. I moved away from that stake without me in. I must have got just about to another stake, and all at once I see the flash come straight down towards the stake where I then put that pot on. And when on my return journey, I had a look, and number 13 stake, stake was just like a woman's fan. It had been hit by lightning. So I was a lucky bird. <laughs> there was one Sunday morning when I went round to uh, going down to the North River. I come up there in my punt, and all at once I saw a half pound eel jump out of the water and go to the bedroom. And when I found out, one of the old punt gunners, Diamond Allen, was a fishing out at his bed. He was fishing out of the bed and catching and taking the eels off, taking the eels off his line in his bedroom up the top, is where his house used to stand right on the corner of what they call Bessie's Buildings, which just below is the North River. Well, I said to Diamond, that's the latest. I said, what do you want? I said, as a, as a one, you don't catch him, catch him anywhere else like that. <laughs> then I took up the shooting, which I took a great interest in. I met a friend called Jack Harwood, which was a body coach builder at Open Broad Coachworks, the Waverley. 
well, he was going to make himself a boat, a punt, to go shooting, which I was very interested in him. As I stood round by Braden Bridge, in one of the, just in the lee, he said to me, hello, he said, I haven't seen you before. I said, no. I said, what's your name? He said, my name is Harwood. Right, I said, my name is Gates. Oh, he said. I said, yes. From then, we got very friendly. And he told me all about the plans for a punt which I turned round and I said to him, well, we might as well build it together. So he showed me some of the, the patterns of the knees which he'd already done at the works to carry this air punt job on. And I went to the Yarmouth Tall House to, get, to have a look at the plans of a Norfolk punt, which was 20 feet by four feet, six wide, and about nine inches draft from centre. Which the one we said, well, the stuff he had, he had already done, the patterns were wrong, out wrong shapes, so we had to carry on and do it different. Well, we made, instead of making one, we made two. When we put them in the water, we laid in the North River, near, near, near Vauxhall Bridge, and there was a boat laid there, a yacht, a very old Scotch yacht, which belonged to a Scotsman. When we put the boats alongside, we couldn't get a mooring properly, so we laid alongside, and he took a look into one of these boats. So he said to us, would you sell one? He said, I should like to take one back to Scotland with me to do a bit of shooting in. Which we said, well, I said to Jack Harwood then, I said, Jack, I said, well, we can't work with two and let this gentleman have them one. The name of the boat, we, the two we built, were the Grey Snipe and the Jack Snipe. But the Grey Snipe, my one, was a bit more fuller in the stern of the punt, so therefore, we let the Jack Snipe go to Scotland with him. Then we were working about on Braden with the Grey Snipe all the while, which was a lucky bit of wood, as we had several good shots in our time. There was one day when the winds were southerly and the Braden was lying with geese to the northeast side. But we couldn't get nowhere near him because the sound would carry too quick to him. So what we done, Jack was the man what used to do the shooting. We went right to the southeast, to the thickest part of the bunch, laid broadside and blew straight across to him. And when we got within range, I, I used to do the polling. I pushed the pole rod into the mud and let her swing. As the boat came round, I said to Jack, right, and he let him have it, and by that shot, he got 11 geese. Well, now, in 1926 was the first time that I got a punt gun, and I bought it off Mr. The same man which I, the same man, which catch eels from his bedroom window, Mr. Allen. Diamond Allen is the nickname. But when I bought it off of me, he told me this and that, of which I had seen in his punt, plenty of nice fowl, big fowl and all, which he said he'd got with his gun. Well, if he got them with that punt gun I bought off him, that must have been a masterpiece. Of course, I never had it for about a month or two, and I sold it. But then I got a breech-loading gun, a breech-loading gun, 
a gram or a half pound gun which I could do anything with. I could kill a single bird or I could kill fifty or a hundred with it if they got in the if they got in the line of our spread. We never used to eat them ourselves, but we used to send them to pet it because pet it would buy the bulk of birds from us, which we used to send him regular. The biggest demand we had and the most easiest birds we get were the big old black back gulls, which they used to make half a crown apiece. The kitties used to make 18 pence. Plubber used to make nineteens. And so so. Uh, we never used to get no hares or nothing. We just simply birds along. Widgeon, golden eye, and everything else used to go to pettits. Whatever we used to get with the gun used to go that way if they were on the list which you're allowed to shoot. Since some times, and everything has grown up with mud, and you see uh, on them lovely grounds where they used to be, lovely flocks of birds flying over and settling for feed, you don't see so much now. The simple reason why, because the tides and everything else are mastered by this here mud. By that time, I finished, well, my friend Jack Harwood, when I lost him, he died about eight or 12 years ago. Well, from then, I packed it up near enough because I used to love the game on Braden and the lovely skies at night and used to watch for the winds to do the shooting and everything else and took great in interest in it. Fishing, shooting and everything else. I'm now turned 65, 66 and I've enjoyed every hour I spent on bread and water.